Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And today guys, what I'm going to be talking to you about is the top 10 tight ends that I have listed for the 2015 NFL Fantasy season. Guys, tight end this year is a position with a lot of talent at the top in my opinion, and then a lot of guys that we don't know a whole lot about. So the top 10 is kind of, it's going to fluctuate from league to league, also dependent on your scoring system, and also dependent on, you know, just how much of a chance that you want to take at the position versus being safe. So we're going to see some of that a little bit uh, both ways in this top 10 list. But let's start off at number 10 and we've got Jason Witten, Dallas Cowboys tight end, in my opinion, future Hall of Famer. Coming to the end of his career, obviously, he only caught 64 passes this past year, but the guy has caught at least 64 passes as far back as I can remember. I mean, we're, the, he puts up consistent numbers every single year. He's only two years removed from being over 100 receptions, and the guy still has it. I mean, the, the Cowboys last year were a very run-heavy team. I expect them to be a little more balanced this year, probably still leaning on the run more heavily than they do the pass, so I don't expect 100 receptions out of Witten again, but I don't think 75 to 85 receptions are out of the question for this guy. He's still very, very good. All reports out of training camp are that he's arguably looking faster than he ever has before, so that's a good thing, but hopefully Jason Witten can come through in the clutch for us at the end of the season and give us some fantasy success here at the end of the year because I mean the guy unfortunately does seem to kind of dwindle down throughout the course of the season so hopefully he can change that around this year. Now, at number nine, we have in the same division, we've got Zach Ertz of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Zach Ertz is a guy that we've been waiting on. Uh, we've heard a lot of things from Philadelphia that, this is, that the team really likes him, but he hasn't really proven it much on the field yet. This, in my opinion, is his opportunity. Unfortunately, he's already suffered an injury in the preseason that set him back a little bit. And unfortunately, Philadelphia also still, still really likes Brent Selleck. Now, it's not to say Brent Selleck's got a better fantasy outlook than, than Zach Ertz does, but the fact that Brent Selleck could be on the field pretty regularly does limit Zach's er, er, Zach Ertz's upside just a little bit. So I'm not taking him as a top five tight end if other, like I otherwise might be if Selleck wasn't in the situation. I think that Zach Ertz definitely does have the talent to be a top five tight end, but right now we just don't know exactly what's going to happen with Philadelphia. He's suffered injuries numerous times in the past now, so we kind of have to be a little bit worried about that. But the talent does definitely dictate that he should be a top 10 tight end. Then. Moving on to number eight, we've got Owen Daniels of the Denver Broncos. Owen Daniels is a guy who has followed Gary Kubiak everywhere he has gone. It's kind of crazy to think, but Owen Daniels is an old veteran. He has never played for any other coach than Gary Kubiak. How crazy is that? That is just bizarre. Uh, I, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised to hear that. But yeah, he followed him to Baltimore and then now he's followed him, him over to Denver. So we're in a situation now where this guy knows the offense and he's stepping in and playing with arguably the best quarterback in the history of the game. Now, Peyton Manning did have a great season in the past couple of seasons, actually, with Julius Thomas at tight end. So there's no reason to think that Owen Daniels won't step in and have a good season this year. Obviously, he's not the tight end, uh, you know, the prototypical go deep and beat defenses deep type of tight end. He's older, like we talked about, so he's not going to be, in my opinion, he's not going to have the explosiveness of a Julius Thomas. But when they get down to the red zone, they do look at the tight end. I mean, those wide receivers on the outside are, are very tough to defend, and a lot of times that can leave the middle of the field open. Owen Daniels is a guy that can score touchdowns. He's done it in the past with much worse quarterback situations, so I'm definitely a big fan of this guy. I think he's a very safe option to be a, a quality top 10 tight end this year. Again, I don't really see him having top five really upside, but I think top 10 is a pretty safe bet for, for Owen Daniels. Moving on to number seven, this is one that I think a lot of people might disagree with me on, but I'm going to go with Delaney Walker from the Tennessee Titans. 63 receptions, 894 yards, and four touchdowns this past year. Delaney Walker was a very good, very underrated fantasy tight end this past year. Now, those numbers don't really jump off the page as being Jimmy Graham numbers or um, or even like Greg Olson numbers or even Martellus Bennett numbers, but beside from aside from like the top elite tier of guys and, and Rob Gronkowski, obviously, but aside from those guys, 
this guy produced at a, a level just in comparison to pretty much everybody else. I mean, he was he was a very high-end tight end aside from the elite guys. So to me, I like Delaney Walker. I think that there really isn't much competition for him there in Tennessee. I do expect that the Titans will try to pass more this year with Marcus Mariota at quarterback. And I think that obviously Marcus Mariota being a little more accurate than what they've had in the past at the, at the quarterback position is going to help Delaney Walker. And uh, hopefully he can get into the end zone a few more times this year. Four touchdowns is kind of on the low end, but obviously we know that Delaney Walker does have the potential. We've seen it before for him to have good games here and there and really take over in certain games. So uh, I like Delaney Walker. I think he's going undervalued. He's going undrafted in a lot of leagues, so you can get him a lot lower than some of the other guys on this list, and I still think he's going to produce really good fantasy numbers for you this year. Moving on to number six, a guy in a new situation, Julius Thomas. We talked about him with the Broncos in the previous couple of years. Now moves on to Jacksonville, got big money in the offseason. The Broncos weren't willing to pay him. They had to keep Demarius Thomas and a couple other guys in the offense that are a little more important to the base core of the offense. But Julius Thomas is, a, like I said, he's kind of a freak athlete at the tight end position. Very, very fast, strong, good route runner, and he's a great receiver at out of, uh, at the, out of the tight end position. Not the best blocker in the world, not terrible, but the big thing in Jacksonville is going to be, in my opinion, that they don't really have any other proven pass catchers. Yeah, we'll talk about Allen Robinson when I do a couple of podcasts and things like that, but at the same time, this team really doesn't have anybody that they've really proven to be able to throw the ball effectively on a consistent basis for. So when you add Julius Thomas, a guy, like I said, that they brought in with big money in the offseason, he was kind of their big free agent acquisition of the year. I expect them to target him a lot this season. I don't go with the young quarterbacks going to throw to the tight end stuff. I, I think that that's overrated. I don't think that there's really any numbers that back that up. If you go back and look, that's kind of not even necessarily true. But Julius Thomas, in this case, I believe that will be true for. I believe that they are going to look to him a lot, especially in the red zone. And I don't see any reason that he won't be at six or more touchdowns this year. Again, six, not what you would have really hoped for in Denver. But still, where you can get Julius Thomas right now, especially since he's nursing a hand injury, that's a good value. I think Julius Thomas is a good bet to be, again, a top 10 fantasy tight end this year, just based on the fact that he's going to get a ton of targets for the Jaguars. Moving on to number five, we've got Martellus Bennett of the Chicago Bears, and obviously Martellus Bennett had a big season this past year. Jay Cutler threw the ball to him a lot. He was up there in targets with the elite of the elite with Gronkowski and Jimmy Graham and those type of guys, but he is very inconsistent. We know that about Martellus Bennett. We've seen it in the past, and unfortunately, I think that those numbers might even be more inconsistent this year. We've got a new offense up there in Chicago. They're not going with the Mark Tressman system, so there could be some serious fluctuation. It's, this team could rely on the actual run more than they have over the past couple of years, and I think that might hurt Martellus Bennett's upside. Now, I still think Bennett's going to get targeted a lot, especially given the fact that Brandon Marshall is gone, Kevin White's injured. He and Alshon Jeffrey are really the only guys in this offense that have much chemistry at all with Jay Cutler. So I think that he's still got a good potential to put up a solid fantasy season this year for a tight end. But I don't expect him to really push to be one of the top two tight ends in fantasy football this year. I think he's more secure as like a three to seven type of a guy, maybe three to eight, somewhere in that range. So good enough to be a fantasy starter for pretty much every league. But at the same time, again, I'm not super high up on his upside being, you know, a, a big monster takeover the game, win you your fantasy league type of season. I think he's just a good, solid fantasy tight end this year. Next, we've got Greg Olson, who I think is kind of in a similar situation to Martellus Bennett, but unfortunately, this situation in Carolina is looking rougher and rougher by the day. I mean, Kelvin Benjamin goes down, and unfortunately, we now see that Devin Funches is the team's top wide receiver. I don't know how that's going to work out for him. This offense might be worse as a whole this year, which is not good, obviously. But the nice thing is, is that Greg Olson is really the only guy there that, again, that has much chemistry with Cam Newton. So Greg Olson, again, was targeted just like Martellus Bennett a lot this past year. Olson's been doing it very consistently for the past three or four years. A lot of receptions, a lot of yards. Five to seven touchdowns, somewhere in that range, seems to be pretty consistent for him. Um, we don't really expect him to go much over that this year. But 
we still would like to see Greg Olson do something that's going to give us a little bit more upside. That's why he's not higher on this list. The upside just isn't there for him, in my personal opinion. But I do think, just like Martellus Bennett, he's probably going to be a good, solid fantasy tight end for you this year, at least if you look over the course of the season. He'll probably be more consistent than Bennett, maybe not the high-end games and maybe not the low-end games that Martellus Bennett brings. And that's kind of what I like out of my tight end position. So that's why I've got Greg Olson listed just above Martellus Bennett at number four. On to number three, we've got Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a guy who broke out this past season. A lot of people in the fantasy community were were hopeful for him last year, but he ended up splitting a lot of touches or splitting a lot of snaps, I should say, at the tight end position for the Chiefs. Now that situation appears to be pretty much entirely in his favor. There doesn't really seem to be much competition for him there in Kansas City. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can take what he did this past year, which is a very productive fantasy season in limited numbers of snaps and targets, and turn it over into a full course of a 16-game season where he's producing at that type of level. The upside for Travis Kelsey is the number one, number two fantasy tight end. So that's what we like to see. The consistency, again, might not be there quite as much, but the upside that he has does put him above a guy like Greg Olson and even a guy like Martellus Bennett for me. Moving on to number two, we have Jimmy Graham, who has traditionally been considered either the number one or number two fantasy tight end, but in consideration as the top tier, I don't think he's in the top tier right now. I think I think our top guy is in his number one tier by himself, and then our second guy, Jimmy Graham, here is in a tier by himself as well, and then we've got a lot of guys after that in kind of a tier. But Jimmy Graham, to me, is an interesting situation because he's going from the New Orleans Saints to the Seattle Seahawks. We know all about that, the trade that they made this offseason, which is really going to change the dynamic of both of those divisions, in my opinion, and both of those offenses entirely. Jimmy Graham now becomes the number one target in Seattle, in my opinion, just like he was in New Orleans, especially at the red zone. But the problem with that is that Seattle doesn't throw the ball nearly as much as New Orleans. In fact, the Seattle Seahawks, since Russell Wilson came into the league, has th have thrown the ball the least of any team in the NFL. 32nd out of 32 teams, they throw the ball the absolute least with Russell Wilson at quarterback. Now, we do expect that to go up. However, even if it does go up, it's still not going to even come close to what the Saints have done over the past couple of seasons. Since Russell Wilson came into the league, the Saints have thrown the ball the most of any team in the league. So you're going from the team that throws the ball the most to the team that throws the ball the least. And again, I expect that gap to be a little bit closer this year with the Saints running a little bit more and the Seahawks passing a little bit more. But still, you've got to consider the fact that this team is not a pass-first offense. That is going to make... Uh, Jimmy Graham's stats a little bit more inconsistent than what we've seen from him in the past. I think he's going to be more touchdown dependent this year than he has been in the past, which is going to lead to some inconsistencies, and it's going to make him a little frustrating to own from time to time, but Jimmy Graham has that 16 to 20 touchdown potential if things go right for him. So, I mean, it's very, very difficult to find that type of talent at the tight end position. I think, again, that he's going to be the number one target in this offense, which makes him easily the tight end number two for me on my list. I think the upside is big here. But again, you might have some struggling weeks where he doesn't do much, followed by a week where he scores three touchdowns. So it could be frustrating to own him. But we're moving on now to our number one fantasy tight end, and I don't think there's really any question about this, Rob Gronkowski. If he stays healthy for a 16-game season, he's literally the best fantasy tight end that has ever played the game. This guy puts up unbelievable numbers. I mean, we're talking like world-class touchdown numbers in a league of his own at any position, frankly, other than quarterback. I mean, nobody scores more touchdowns per game than Rob Gronkowski. That's It's just it's ridiculous how many touchdowns this guy scores. His yardage is insane. The, the Patriots love to throw the ball to him anywhere on the field, but especially near the red zone, so you can get that Gronk spike going at, at the uh, in the end zone. But, you know, the reality of the situation is, is that the only concern we have about Rob Gronkowski is if he's going to stay healthy. If he does stay healthy, I don't think there's really any way that any other tight end is going to put up the type of numbers that he does. Jimmy Graham, even Travis Kelsey, even. It's very, very difficult for those guys to, to come close to what Rob Gronkowski is going to do. And I understand Brady's going to be out for four games. It sounds like, it, I mean, it's possible that that gets reduced, but it's becoming less and less likely by the day, by the way. Um, but even if he doesn't play all 16 games, even if you told me that Tom Brady was only going to play for 12 games this year, I still think that Rob Gronkowski easily has 
to be the number one fantasy tight end this year. Jimmy Garoppolo is still going to be looking toward Rob Gronkowski. You have to imagine the guy is just too damn good to not throw the football to. So that's going to do it, guys. That is our number one tight end, Rob Gronkowski. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I will be doing a kicker and a defense video. I'm not too excited about it, but enough people have asked me to do it that I will actually be putting out my list of top 10 kickers and defenses. It's going to be a short list. We're not going to talk for 15 minutes at a time about kickers and defenses, but I'll give you guys my quick list anyways. And I'm also going to give you guys some sleepers, some potential busts, and that type of stuff that can help you with your fantasy season. So if you guys have any suggestions or any other questions for me, please be sure to leave those in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.